Welcome to another tutorial from SparkBooth Layout Creator. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how all the buttons work and what they do in SparkBooth Layout Creator. My name is Joe Connell from A1 Photo Booth. Button at the top left is your new layout button. You can start there, starting with a blank screen and add boxes to it which would be your photo boxes, anywhere from one to four, as many as you want. Or you can select a read-only file from the list, whether you want wide or square, keeping in mind whether or not you, want to, you are going to be using in wide commercial or in square regular. It's up to you. The next box over is the layout clone the clone layout button when you select a read-only file you need to clone it so that you can work with it as you can see here I can click on these boxes and they don't do anything but if you clone it save it as a new file then you can work on it the next button over is the trash can after you have created a layout of any type They'll be at the top of the list with the new name that you've titled it. An example would be this one here. And these are ones that can be changed and removed. But if you didn't need it anymore, you can delete it. It'll bring it up on the screen asking you, are you sure you want to delete it? You say yes, and it's gone. Ignore this one for now. It was a little more elaborate and wild. We'll get to that one later. But let's go back over to this one here and continue on with the description of the buttons that you see at the top of the screen icons. The next one is the preview button. If you click on that, it will open up your screen in whatever program you use to view images. And it'll show you an example of how the photo boxes would look without backgrounds or anything else. Then you can just close the photo viewer window and go right back to working on your layout. The next button over is the export layout button. When you click on that you will be finished with your layout and ready to export it so that you can use it in the SparkBooth program. It will save the file as an SBL file. So when you save the file, you want to make sure you know what folder it's being placed into. I'll give you an example real quick here. If this file here layout was finished and we wanted to save it and export it out, make sure you place it in a folder where you can find it. I have a folder that I call SB New Layouts. And anytime I have a new layout that I'm going to save as an SBL file, as you can see right here, then I would rename the file down here with a new name. Something like new layout. We can always change this later. We hit the save button, it saves it to that folder, it's all done, you click OK. The next button over is the add, the next two buttons over are the add and remove photo buttons. You'll notice that they're not showing an icon text file underneath because this is still a read only file. So I'm going to click on new layout. And show you how that actually works. When you click on new layout you'll want to name it or leave it as new template. Then you want to select the paper size that you are going to use and there are a lot of different paper sizes besides just 4 by 6. Depending on how your printer is all set up and the, the whatever you're using your photo booth photo strips as you would select that size. 
You tell it whether you want it landscape or portrait. For those that are using it portrait, it would be vertical up and down. For those that are using it landscape, it would be side to side. I'm going to put it on portrait. You also decide whether or not you're using square or widescreen. If you did not, if you're not using widescreen, you want to make sure you have it on square in your Sparkboot program. That would be listed under commercial in the settings menu. I am going to select widescreen for this one. The DPIs will actually create larger templates, but they're still smaller to fit the 4x6 format. It's just having the images at a higher quality level. It's not necessary to get full quality photos with your photo booth as long as you're using a high quality webcam and very good lighting. I use 300 DPI. Once you've done that and you hit OK, you will now see an empty blank page where you can now add a photo. The photo usually defaults set a 300, uh, I'm sorry, a 600 by 400 image for the widescreen photos. You can drag it by placing your mouse on top, left clicking, and moving it where you want while you're holding down the left mouse button. When you get it where you want it, you let it go. You can actually reduce the size of the image over here under the width and it will proportionately reduce the height at the same time as you up, up and down click the arrows to change it pixel by pixel. You can also grab any corner box and drag and dra drag it down holding down your left mouse button to make it smaller keeping in proportion for the wide image. You can place it where you want it by moving it up and down, left and right, or you can move it pixel by pixel the same way. And there is another shortcut, is as long as you have it selected, if you use your arrow down key on your keyboard, it will move down. I'm holding it down and it moves it down click up one pixel at a time you'll see it's barely moving up moving one pixel at a time to the left so you can use your arrow keys or place it to really be precise as to where you're going to put your boxes once you get your first box box placed and sized you click away from it click add another box it will create another box the identical size of your first one with the number two in a different color Place it where you want. You'll notice as I move it over here, if it's lined up perfectly, we now have guidelines. The new guidelines are very helpful for placing the photos vertically and horizontally in alignment with other photo boxes. I'm going to click over here to add another box. Even though I haven't clicked away from number two, it will add a third box. You click on it, move it where you want it, right to where the lines line up, let go, add another box, it'll make number four. We will align them better later. You'll notice once you have four boxes and if you click a number one, if you click a photo, add another photo, it comes back to number one. So you can normally put side by side boxes. You add another one, you move it up where you want it, lining it up with the boxes left and right, and up and down. You can still adjust these the same way as before with using the X and Y on the right or your arrow keys left and right. And as you come out of alignment, 
you'll notice that the line, the guidelines disappear. We'll add a third box, moving it over, add a fourth box, moving it down, making sure all the boxes are lined up. I click on one, and once I get crosshairs, from cross lines, guidelines from left to right, up and down on that box, I know it is lined up with the ones vertically and the ones horizontally. The same goes with the one at the top. I line it up, get them exactly where you want them, and you're all set for a basic template. Additional features will, have, will be shown in the next version. You can also, right in the layout creator, add a background. You just want to make sure that the background that you're adding is proportionately the same size as the layout that you are creating. If you created a 300 DPI layout in portrait, then you would have to make sure that the layout that you are going, the background you are going to use is 1200 wide by 1800, 1200 wide by 1800 high. To add a background, all you need to do is click on the paper clip, select a layout background. It will open up the folders wherever you might have backgrounds or designs that you can use. I have a folder called backgrounds and I'm going to have to scroll down to something other than a normal normal background here and of course my images are so large that I can't see what I'm looking for. Let's say we use, see if I were to select this background that is not portrait you'll see what will happen. It only covers the middle. So if you selected the, uh, a wrong background, you just use the reset layout background, which removes the background you just added. Or you could have selected the paper clip again and just selected a different background that is in the proportions to your layout. Overlays are a little more in depth, but they work the same way as adding backgrounds. And when you finally get it finished and all of your photos in the place where you'd like to keep them, that's when you would export the layout to a folder to add it into your SparkBooth program. You name the file when you select the new template layout, name it to whatever you want, place it in your layouts folder if you've got one listed that way. I have new layouts and you'll notice that it names the files with an extension of SBL. You can't open these files and look at them in this folder. They're only there to be stored until you load them into your SparkBooth program. I'm going to name this one rename it with the test at the end. Once it's done, click OK. And when you close your SparkBooth layout creator, it will revert back to the last layout you were working on. Now that you have a new layout, you need to add it to the SparkBooth program. In order to do that, you open up your SparkBooth program and go into settings by using your F1 key and selecting the photo layouts. Photo layouts will default to the last photo layout you are using. To add a new layout, you click on the folder up at the top, import layout file, and it requires the commercial license. Upon clicking that, It will open the window on your desktop to select the folder that you have that file in. 
the new layouts folder is where it should be. The one we are looking for was that new template called test. You click on it, you click open, and you'll see it loaded into the program just the way you saw it before. You'll notice that it brought in the background and the template with the layout. You can remove the background inside of Spark Boot program, but if you do remove it, the only way you can, one of the only ways you can bring it back in is by reloading the layout, the new layout again, because it is attached to the pro the layout program file. So if I were to remove the background at this point, you still have your layout. The only way you would be able to bring that background back in is if you already have it on your computer. If someone sends you or if you download an SBL file without the background, you do not want to delete it here. That's all for now with the tutorial on the basics of using the layout creator. Thank you.